Welcome to the H2O Driverless AI installation video for Azure. In this video, we're going to walk through the process of installing H2O's Driverless AI product in an Azure cloud environment. We'll start off by going to the H2O AI website to access the documentation on the process. We click the download link, variety of products available, go to the Driverless AI section, and we see a number of links here. First thing we want to do is request a license. So a license key is required for a trial of driverless AI. We click the link and are presented with a form where we can fill in name and a uh, title, company, email address. And sending that off, we'll get the process rolling for a trial license to be emailed to your email account. I've already done this, so I don't need to repeat that. I have that email handy. We'll then push into the driverless AI documentation. This is online documentation for all of the driverless AI product, including the install process. Within the install process, there's some information describing the uh, process, what some of the requirements are, 10 gigs of free disk space, 64 gigs of free memory. Um, but we can also jump to the quick start table and look at the different options and environments and requirements necessary to get driverless AI up and running. We can install in cloud environments. There's a table here describing each of those. And servers, standalone servers, or even desktops. We're interested in installing in Azure, so we'll click on that link, jump to the instructions for performing an installation of driverless AI within the Azure cloud. Uh, the first thing we want, well, there's, we can kind of browse through this a little, right? There's a number of things here. All of the steps are outlined with diagrams and images showing the whole process. First thing we want to do is go into Microsoft Azure and click on the Virtual Machines menu pick on the left hand side. Within here we click on the Add button to create a new virtual machine. And the first thing we want to do is search for H2O Driverless AI. There are a couple of instances available. I'll select one of those and go ahead and click on the Create button to create a new instance. We get presented with four basic, four individual steps that are required in order to create this instance. The first section is basic, and we have to create a name for our instance. I'll call this Dave DAI. I'm going to select the HDD option for the VM disk and put a username in here for how to access this instance once it's up and running. We'll want to SSH into it and SCP perhaps to put data up there. I'll create a password for it. and confirm it. We'll do pay as you go and we'll create a new resource group and location in US East is good. The next section is talking about size of instance. We'll just do a basic NC6 here. These are recommended instance sizes. You'll want to probably do uh, you know, whatever is suitable for your particular data set and needs. We'll select that and we then have additional settings and configuration options. The one I'm interested in here is virtual network. We have uh, um, network settings already in place. You can create a new one and configure that or use ones that you've already got available. Okay. Finally, on to the summary. Everything looks pretty good, so I will go ahead and create this instance. While this is spinning up, it takes a little while to do, what we'll do is just pause for a moment and wait for that instance to pop up and restart the video at that point. Okay, so our instance is up and running, and we can see information about it here in Azure. In particular, we can see the public IP address of the node that we created. I'm going to copy that and then go to my terminal window so that I can SSH to my username that I specified at that host. I need my password and we're in and we can poke around a little bit, see what directory we're in, do a listing, we can see that in ETC H2O AI 
data directory. There's some data already loaded in here, not very much. And we can start the instance by running sudo h2oai start to get the driverless AI instance up and running. In the meantime, I can come back to my local host and I can SCP some data up. I've got a data set here in my proj h12 data loan directory that I'd like to put up to that instance. And I gotta change the whoop, AI at change the IP address and copy that to etc h2oai data and need that password again and we can see that data is now being copied up having that data in the data directory means that once the driverless ai instance is up and running we'll have access to our own data that we loaded up rather than having to use um, sample data that was already on the system so again, we can take that IP address and now we can actually browse to the H2OAI server itself. Should be up and running by now. <clears throat> First thing we're presented with is a driver, driverless AI evaluation agreement, which we'll agree to. And then we'll log into the server. This is a uh, evaluation server, so any username and password will do. We're informed right away that we need a license to get this up and running. And fortunately, my email has arrived. We see that we've received a response from H2O. And at the bottom is the actual, H, the actual license key. So I'll copy that key, paste it in over here. We get information about the license serial number, when it was created, how long it lasts. I can save that. And now we can jump to the experiment section, where I can create a new experiment within the driverless AI environment. Selecting data allows me to browse for my data sets. Jumping into the data directory, we see that loan CSV that I uploaded. So I can select that data. And we get presented with the screen for driving an experiment. First thing I want to do is select a target. We're going to do, this is loan data, trying to determine if a consumer should be granted a loan application or not. So we're going to predict on that verification status. We're going to drop some columns in this. The interest rate turns out is uh, um, not necessary for doing this training. And, you know, a number of options here for doing things. There are other videos for actually how to drive driverless AI. We just wanted to kick off an experiment here just to show that we now have driverless up and running. So we've gone through the steps quite simply of accessing Azure creating a new virtual machine, selecting H2O driverless AI, and getting that instance up and running, starting it, providing some data, and getting an experiment running. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us.